So a couple of days ago, I tested out the Ryzen 2200G paired with an RX 570 4GB card as well as 16GB of system memory just to see if this was a good matching between about a $100 processor and a roughly $130, at least at the time of purchase. Actually, I lied. It was $140. A $140 graphics card, and I found that four Ryzen cores without simultaneous multi-threading is probably not quite enough of CPU horsepower to actually keep this GPU fed. So for today's video, I went ahead and added that simultaneous multi-threading. This time we're going to be testing the RX 570 4GB card with a Ryzen 2400G and all CPUs, everything is run at stock speeds, no overclocking whatsoever done here. I'm just trying to figure out if adding simultaneous multi-threading to the equation smooths out the frame rates in those games that struggled, especially The Witcher 3 and in particular Overwatch was just a stuttery mess on the 2200G. So let's go ahead and take a look at the charts and see if we fixed the problem by just adding SMT. Now jumping right into Overwatch, this was the biggest difference that I saw. And obviously with the average columns, both processors gave us a good average score. The problem with the 2200G was that it was a stuttery mess anytime I was in a firefight. And that's reflected with the 1% low number. Obviously the 2400G, that was not the case. Now looking over at the 0.1% low numbers, the 2400G apparently did have some slow frames in there, but they were so rare that I couldn't have actually picked them out while I was playing the game. So I wasn't experiencing that stutter on my end. That's just reflected in the charts. So really pay attention to that 1% low number because that's where I was really experiencing big problems with the 2200G and obviously not so much with the 2400G. Moving on to The Witcher 3, it's a similar story just to a lesser magnitude. Again, slight gains for the 2400G, but the big gain comes with the 1% low. And with the stuttering in the 2200G, when I loaded into a new area as I walked around or traveled, I was experiencing significant stutter for a little bit of time, maybe a few seconds to five seconds after I got into sort of a new area. That was relegated to like a half second for the 2400G, like I might stutter once and I would definitely notice that but then it would just keep moving along like nothing had happened and I didn't really see that stutter come back at all throughout my gameplay there it was really relegated to just as I moved into a new location and nothing else and finally moving into the anomaly of my testing that was GTA 5 now understand with this particular run I was not using a built-in benchmark here I was just starting a police chase and then going all over the city and I'm sure that's accounting for part of the difference between the 2400G and the 2200G. The other thing to consider is the 2200G was not the bottleneck in this game. This was the only game that it wasn't really the bottleneck at any point. So the GPU is what is limiting performance in this particular game. So I was expecting these numbers to be quite close to begin with. And obviously that played out in the charts. Now, whether this is something that you would see consistently where the 2200G is actually beating the 2400G in GTA 5. I don't know. That would take significantly more testing, but the point today is to figure out if the uh, RX 570 is a good pairing with the 2200G or the 2400G. This game is sort of the standout example of where the 2200G shines is in games that are not CPU bottlenecked. So, like I said in the chart voiceover, I'm not really sure what was going on with GTA 5 there, but Overwatch especially really told the tale there. The 2200G is just not strong enough of a CPU for these higher refresh rate games, especially uh, games like Overwatch are gonna struggle very much with the 2200G, but by adding SMT with the 2400G, you're getting a lot better of an experience, and I would highly recommend if you're considering a 570, and you're building a new system, get a quad core with eight threads. The Ryzen 1400 on Amazon is only $25 more than the 2200G, but you're going from four cores and four threads to four cores and eight threads. Now, the clock speed on the 1400, I believe, is less than the 2400G out of the box, but you can always overclock that processor as well. Even with the stock cooler, you can get a small overclock on it, which will then help your frame rates as well. But of course, I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know down below what you think about this pairing of a quad core Ryzen chip with eight threads, so with SMT, with the RX 570, four gigabyte. I think it's a pretty good pairing, 
both pretty budget parts when you're talking about a $120 processor and a GPU that only cost me $140. But I want to know your thoughts. Let me know down below. And of course, if you like this video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. Hopefully everyone had a great Thanksgiving out there, by the way. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. Click one of these videos to watch another one from my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.